The appropriate control of temperatures during the storage and the transport of vaccines is critical to ensure potency and safety. Liquid formulations of vaccines containing diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, hepatitis B, Haemophilus influenzae type B and their combinations, absorbed vaccines, should not be frozen. However, practices exposing vaccines to sub-zero temperatures are widespread in both developed and developing countries at all levels of health systems. The most recent systematic literature review of vaccine freezing highlights that accidental freezing is pervasive and occurs across all segments of the cold chain. Between 14 and 35 percent of refrigerators or transport shipments were found to have exposed vaccine to freezing temperatures. There are some other studies that examined all segments of distribution. In these studies, 75 and 100 percent of the time, vaccines were found to be exposed to freezing temperatures. When a vaccine is damaged by freezing, the loss of potency can never be restored. The damage is permanent. Use of freeze-damaged vaccine can result in compromised immunogenicity in recipients and increases local reactions such as sterile abscesses. Shake test allows to determine whether absorbed vaccines have been affected by freezing. After freezing, the lattice, the bond between the absorbent and the antigen, is broken. Separated absorbent tends to form granules that get heavier in weight and bigger in size. After the vial is shaken, the granules gradually settle at the bottom of the vial. The size of the granules increases on repeated freezing and thawing cycles. Following shaking, sedimentation occurs faster in a vaccine vial that has been frozen compared to a vaccine vial of the same antigen and batch from the same manufacturer that has never been frozen. Shake test protocol was developed based on empiric observations in the field. However, as a reference test, it has never been validated against the Golden Test. There are two publications with claims that the Shake test is impractical or not a valid test to identify freeze damage vaccines. First one from Canada is based on the study of 80 vials of DTP and DTP IPV vaccines with the claim that none of the frozen vials produced a positive shake test. Although the authors indicated that accelerated sedimentation was evident in all frozen vials, it is not clear how the authors concluded that the test is impractical. The second article comes from India, claiming to be a validation study, but not having any validation design components. Therefore, we do not consider this publication as a valid validation study on the shake test. Absorbed vaccines kept at the optimal temperature, plus 2 degrees centigrade to plus 8 degrees centigrade, show a fine grain structure under phase contrast microscopy. On the contrary, large conglomerates of massed precipitates are observed in vaccines affected by freezing. This study is designed to establish the sensitivity and specificity of the shake test using phase contrast microscopy as the golden test. By the time of study plan, a total of 14 manufacturers had freeze-sensitive products that are WHO pre-qualified. So, looking at this, I can see that you've got eight different vaccine types and about 10 manufacturers. But there's many more presentations than there are just vaccine types because they come in 
vial sizes from anywhere from one dose up to 20 doses. So is there, do we need to be worried about the vial size difference? Like if I went to a single manufacturer that had a one, a 10, a 20, is there any reason to suppose that the free sensitivity would be different in a different vial size? No, it should be the same. In theory, we do not expect any behavioral change in shake tests from different vial sizes. Okay. So then we could just go ahead and mostly use this uh, 10. That's correct. Okay. 10 is the most common. And then where we don't have it, use the one. Okay. If we move along to now taking that information and putting it into a sampling design, one of the things we have to look at is that we want to make sure that we get a certain number of samples from every manufacturer and a certain number of samples for every type of vaccine, but we also want to minimize the number of samples, at the same time ensuring that we get adequate sensitivity and specificity. So from a purely statistical perspective, one of the things we want to do is we want to say we want a minimum of 30 samples from each vaccine and each manufacturer. But that being said, because we have this cross-tabulated relationship between manufacturers and vaccines, we don't have to sample 30 vials of each vaccine made by each manufacturer. We can reduce the number of samples when there are lots of manufacturers making a particular vaccine or lots of vaccines made by any particular manufacturer. This sample size is adequate to calculate specificity and sensitivity with a high precision. In general, the sample size of 480 can be considered unnecessarily high. However, in order to show that there is no difference between presentations, Obtaining 30 samples from each vaccine type is required. All the manufacturers included in the study were contacted with the request to send required samples to the World Health Organization, and the study protocol was shared with them. Five extra vials were requested for each type of vaccine to be used for teaching the shake test. Inter-observer variation test and validation of the test protocol with phase contrast microscopy. Vaccines were picked up by DHL and transported to the Geneva World Health Organization headquarters. All vaccines arrived at the WHO in 22 hours and 35 minutes to 101 hours and 30 minutes transit time. International transportation of vaccines was monitored by QTAG 2 Plus temperature monitoring device. On arrival, all vaccines were stored at 5 degrees centigrade. Vaccines were grouped to be exposed to different temperatures. Frozen samples were prepared at minus 25 degrees centigrade, while a group of vaccines was exposed to minus 2 degrees centigrade to test whether any physical changes would occur with the exposure if there is no freezing. All vaccines by type and manufacturer were submerged in cold water in separate aluminum trays and left overnight in a cold storage for easy removal of original labels. Cleaning of original labels, drying of vials and application of new study labels were done at room temperature. Vials were classified according to temperature exposure grouping. Before the temperature treatment of samples, all original labels were removed and a new custom-made label was attached to each vial. This label was made of a seven-digit numerical code, including the sample number, vaccine manufacturer, vaccine type, and freezing status. Code was assigned by co-investigator number one and remained undisclosed until the study was completed. Minus 25 and minus 2 degrees centigrade exposures to vaccines were conducted at the thermometry and ionizing radiation section of the Federal Office of Metrology, METAS, in Bern.
After 24 hours, vaccines were removed from the temperature chambers. Physical statues of all vials were examined. All vaccine vials exposed to minus 25 degrees centigrade were found to be in solid frozen state, while all vaccines exposed to minus 2 degrees centigrade were found to be fully liquid. All vaccines were brought back to the World Health Organization headquarters and stored at 5 degrees centigrade. Vaccines were transported to the study site, the Institute of Hygiene in Warsaw, Poland, via DHL. Vaccines were packed in insulated containers with cool water packs. One QTAG 2 Plus per carton was used for temperature monitoring purposes. Upon arrival, vaccines were immediately placed in plus 5 degrees centigrade storage facility at the Institute of Hygiene. We used three blinds in this study design. The first one is the shake test by healthcare workers. The second one, face contrast microscopy by study center. And the third one, statistical analysis by the second co-investigator. These blinds had no information on the findings of each other, and they did not know what the coding on the vaccine labels meant. At the study center location, five healthcare workers were selected with no previous experience, neither on vaccines nor on the shake test. They were trained and coached by the principal investigator on how to conduct the shake test using the standard shake test learning guide. Vaccines coded as A, B, C and X were used for demonstration during this training. As a first step, inter-observer variation was checked on 10 frozen and 10 non-frozen samples. Following the training, Health workers were given ABC and X vaccines to practice on their own for half a day. Recruitment criteria for the study was established for each health worker to perform three consecutive successful shake tests. During the inter-observer variation tests, all five health workers have performed fail and pass tests correctly and were all recruited. Study vials were split between five health workers in sets of either 20 or 30 vials from different vaccine types and manufacturers and a control vial for each set. Health workers were requested to agree upon a coding number for pass and fail tests and code the results accordingly. Health workers were also requested to record decision time for each vaccine type by manufacturer. Vials were vigorously shaken and the aluminum crimping and rubber stopper were removed from the vial. 10 microliter vaccine was dropped onto a slide and covered by a cover slip. All samples were examined under 320 magnification. Vaccines were examined for structural formations and each sample was photographed. The results were coded in numerical code for frozen and non-frozen vaccines. The results from both the shake test and phase contrast microscopy were tabulated by the co-investigator number two in two by two table. A total of 475 vials of freeze-sensitive WHO pre-qualified vaccines from 10 manufacturers and 8 vaccine types were included in the study, with 5 vials broken upon arrival at Warsaw and thus excluded from the study. Using phase contrast microscopy, it is very easy to distinguish the frozen and not frozen vaccines. We have tested 475 vials and we confirm 156 vials as frozen and 319 vials as not frozen. In not frozen samples, we see a fine grain structure under phase contrast microscopy. On the contrary, 
in the frozen samples, we can see large aggregates of particles. Based on correctly performing and interpreting 10 consecutive shake tests, five health workers were recruited for the study inter-observer error, which was calculated as zero. That is, the difference in interpretation by two or more individuals making observations of the same phenomenon. Results from both shake test and phase contrast microscopy was tabulated in a table. Health workers' interpretation of the shake test results and phase contrast microscopy readings overlapped 100%. There were neither false positive nor false negative readings by health workers. The results of our test were actually quite good. We only broke five vials. But that's not the full result. Out of the 480 that we tested, taking out the five that we broke, we ended up with testing 475 vials. What was really unusual is that of the 156 frozen vials, all 156 correctly failed the shake test. And of the 319 vials that were not frozen, the shake test correctly passed all of those. This is an ideal result because it means that we had 100% sensitivity, 100% specificity, and 100% positive predictive value. It means that you can be quite sure that if you use this test, you will correctly identify those vaccine vials that are frozen, and you won't mistakenly identify non-frozen vials as having been frozen and throw them out. Health workers also recorded the time of decision on whether the test was diagnosed as a fail or pass test. Decision time is not indicative since it entirely depends on the experience of the health worker. However, it gives an idea that the test takes longer with smaller size vials. The fastest decision time was 44 seconds with a TT vaccine, while the longest one was experienced with monodose HIB vaccine by 20 minutes. Except for these two extreme values, all other products were read within one to five minutes. All vaccines exposed to minus 25 degrees centigrade were found to be in solid frozen state after 24 hours. However, none of the vaccines that were exposed to minus 2 degrees for 24 hours were found to be frozen. All were in liquid state. This confirms that actual freezing depends upon a host of factors, including the temperature below zero, duration that the vaccine is exposed, and whether the vaccine is agitated during that time period. Phase contrast microscopy findings of these vaccines were identical to the ones that were kept at optimum temperatures, showing fine grain structure. This finding also confirms that the shake test is to define whether vaccines are affected by actual freezing and not necessarily whether they are exposed to sub-zero temperatures. This demonstrates the value of the shake test to decide whether a freeze-sensitive